Even though Jojo is often described as big manly men punching each other, there is no denying the huge impact that almost every female character has in their respective parts. Like how Eruna's role in Phantom Blood is a huge driving factor for the main character's goal. The way Araki wrote and characterized his female characters evolved as the series moved forward, and I thought that discussing the female representation in Jojo would make for a cool video. But before we start, let me just say that... I'm not a female, but I really love how all the girls in Jojo get the same treatment as everyone else. For better and for worse, of course. They could be allies, or they could be enemies. They could be brave heroes or dastardly villains. They could be anything in between. They could be both stronger or weaker, emotionally and physically, but in the end of the day, they just feel like real people to me. I think it's really important to have contrast in life, so let me just quickly go through the male representation in Jojo so you can compare for later. Listen, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is very progressive in the way it portrays masculinity, as the male characters shown are not heroic for their strength but because of their kindness, and that they use their strength to protect others. The men in the series show emotion of all types and they are never weak or unmanly for it. Even though yeah, often Jojo is called gay because of it, but that doesn't matter. A big part of gender equality is letting men question traditional gender roles as much as women. Guys have feelings, and using them doesn't take away from them being a good male character. And in that aspect, I think that Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is one of the best series in that regard. Alright, let's begin. As I mentioned earlier, Erin loves a driving factor for Jonathan, and even though she's not involved in combat as much, she's a really strong character. She's just strong emotionally, as she's able to overcome the death of her husband and live a long, independent life. Seeing her as an old lady in battle tendency, having moved on from the tragedy and apparently having made her way through the rest of her life as a single woman, keep in mind in a very sexist time period, shows Erina's emotional strength. Also that time when Erina washed her mouth with mud to spite Dio was probably the top Erina moment. When we're anyways on the topic of battle tendency, Lisa Lisa is really strong, and I think that having the mysterious mentor archetype filled by a woman was very interesting. A middle-aged mom is something that you rarely see in action stories. She's a stone-cold badass, and again, like Erina, she has a lot of emotional strength. The idea that she left her family behind to find revenge is again, a common storyline for male characters. So I really like that Araki has no problem with using traditional male stories, but for a woman. Very quick tangent, but Yukako is dope. I think she is the perfect gendere trope before the trope was even a thing, and she's a good gendere da, which I would never really see. But more importantly, I think she's well characterized and has such a good striking personality. Or even Trish from Golden Wind, as she's introduced as the standard issue weak, helpless damsel in distress plot device with nothing much more to her. <laughs> but then the story puts her in a position where she has no choice but to act. Trish is a character that we see start off as rather weak, but it's clear that a lot of it is because of a peaceful life, and how everyone around her expects her to act a certain way. It is shown throughout the whole Biggie Smalls fight that she's still used to being the one who's protected by others, and that she's fighting her own cowardice just the same as she's fighting the enemy, which is what makes it so believable. It is so believable and genuine, the way that she managed to fight off those old feelings of fear and dependence and gain the confidence and bravery that she needs to rescue Jono and save the lives of the rest of the party. It is so believable how confident she is near the end of the fight like she's riding a newfound surge of self-confidence and power. It's an incredible well done subversion of the damsel in distress archetype as she's every bit as powerful as the rest of the crew. Well done Araki. Let's talk Stone Ocean, which is a primarily female dominated cast and a really strong one at that. I enjoyed the sisterhood between Jolene, Ermis and Foo Fighters in part 6, and it was awesome to see Araki create so many strong female characters in one part, especially since Shonen Jump didn't want so many female characters. Of course, this didn't extend to Anasui, as the Shonen Jump editorial staff at the time refused to have a lesbian protagonist, so Hirohiko Araki changed Anasui to a man. But in the end of the day, this doesn't really matter, as Anasu is still a really strong character, and this leaves the Stone Ocean cast as one of the coolest in the series. Okay, so before we get to Lucy, let me just bring up the topic of over-sexualizing weak females in Jojo, because it is a thing. But what people might forget is that Araki creates weak characters, both male and female, and some designs and poses are pretty sexual for both genders. 
I mean, just look how over-sexualized the Jostos were from the very beginning, or if you want an example from part 7, the very sexualized poses of Jairus Apelli. So, I always hear people bring up Lucy as the example of over-sexualizing minds in Jojo as she's 14 years old. But the same people seems to totally forget about Giorno as he's 15 years old and he's very sexualized in his part. <sighs> so, what's up with Lucy then? Well, she starts off as a trophy wife, but then gets involved in some deep shit because of her worries about her husband. We later find out that her relationship with Steven is nothing that we thought about, as she becomes one of the most badass and resolute characters in all of Jojo. And yeah, some of it is because of the awful things that Valentine does towards her. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so Hirose from part A Jojolion is my personal favorite girl, as she's the best written female character in all of Jojo. Of all of these characters that I talked about, she's the one that feels actually real, like she could exist in a parallel universe or something. I really like Yasuho, as I could personally relate to her, and if there's one female character that I would be a cringy weeb over in Jojo, yeah it would be her. <laughs> she's a really strong, independent woman, and there's nothing more badass than this girl right here, but I do really want to dedicate a video just to her, so I'ma just leave it here for now. My closing statement on the female representation in Jojo is that Jojo is so good because of the fact that Araki doesn't give a fuck about gender roles. 